you did hook up. No, you did not hook up. And that is how I feel about dating. And then I'm like, oh my god. Hey, what's up you guys? Jackie, Madeline, and Drew here. We want to do a Q&A today and let you guys ask us questions if you need advice on something. Yeah, if you want, if you have need advice on outfit, clothes, boyfriend, mom, dad, help, school, we're here, things. we're here. All the things, you guys leave us a message or you can even leave us a video message. If you want to remain anonymous, just let us know. We'll bore you out because we're going to do this video today. So hurry up, get those questions in, that advice you want ASAP. <laughs> submit, submit, submit. You guys saw the Instagram story. This is a new segment that we like to call Clever Conversations. Conversations. I feel like that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Voice of an angel. You guys asked us questions, asked for advice on Instagram, and we took it to the table to answer that advice. Yeah, we're so excited to talk to you guys and just to give you any bit of knowledge that we know and help you. We're here to help. All right, you guys, first question. Having a hard time finding my style, what do you recommend as a start to finding my style? Hmm. So the only thing I was gonna say is I pretty much have had the same type of feeling every couple of years. I'm like, oh, what am I into right now? I'm not really into what I used to wear. I wanna try something new. Check out Pinterest. They have a ton of just great inspiration photos. I started doing boards like 2022 style or like what I like right now. And then I'll just start curating images that spark joy. I really think inspiration, you just literally can copy. It's so easy. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's actually really good advice to get inspired by looks that you personally like on other people. But I also think it's just about filling it out. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it could get really expensive. So maybe just going, taking a day to go shopping yeah. and going to the dressing room and putting different things together so you don't have to invest just yet. Mm -hmm. And you could see what it looks like on your body. You yeah. Know? I say experiment with it. Like, yeah. my style is so eclectic. Like, it's not one thing. Like, one day I want to be like girly and frilly, and the next day I want to be like Avril Lavigne. I love it all. How often do you shave down there? Any product recs to reduce bumps slash redness? This is a very good question. I think that it's totally up to you, like how often you want to. Like if you want to have like a Barbie vag, then go for it. You gotta do it like what, every once a month or what, however often you grow hair. But if you like want a little something, something down there, then like, you know, just let it grow. See, this is how I feel personally. Like if I'm sleeping with someone, then I like, like it to be naked. So then I'll like just get it waxed every month or so, like however long it takes for it to grow back. But if I'm not, I let that sh grow into the rainforest cafe, okay? I just let it go wild. The girls have gone wild. But I do know that like if you want to reduce bumps, you should get it done often. I actually mm -hmm. personally am looking into laser mm -hmm. just because shaving and waxing just doesn't do it for me. And I, I don't like that it's like nice and smooth for like three weeks and all of a sudden it's like bump, bump, bump. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, even if I exfoliate. So for me, yeah. I've tried a lot of products, a lot of like loofahs and scrubbing to make sure that I avoid ingrown hairs, mm -hmm. but it's unavoidable for me. So I personally am gonna be looking into laser, so. Yeah. If you're like really stuck and just wanna do shaving, I say just change out your razor as often as possible, mm -hmm. maybe like every second or third use or third, and just clean it with alcohol, like really keep it sharp and sterile, I guess. And we already had the video come out where Sinead and I discussed our Amazon favorites. Check it out, you guys. I talk about this product called Tend Skin. Mm -hmm. Waxing hurts so bad. I feel like I it's don't in your it hurts head. That bad. Dude, my wax lady is really good at telling me to like, okay, now breathe. Like, we'll be talking and then she's yeah. like, okay, deep breath. And then she'll do it. Yeah. I don't know what like the size yeah. of the pattern, but it works. You it's to like breathe out baby. as they're like pulling. Yeah. It's like, oh no. Well, I hate that because they like distract you. You probably have somebody that you go to and see often, so you yeah. guys have bonded. Yeah. But I'll go to like, <laughs> random people and like they'll be like so how was your yeah. vacation did it and then i'm like oh my god <laughs> no kelly clarkson Best advice for meeting a guy or finding a boyfriend. Cute. Look, Aww. I mean, we're in the entertainment industry and they always say with auditions, it's a numbers game. And that is how I feel about dating. You just want to be in as many situations where you're meeting as many people as possible. So it's dating apps, Instagram, friend of friend. Mm -hmm. And the more opportunities you have to meet young, nice people, I also don't feel like then you start to like hone in on every guy being like the guy. Cause I think we trip ourselves up thinking like, oh, I like one person, they have to be the boyfriend. When it's like, if you're meeting a lot of people, you have options, you kind of see what you like, what you don't. I will say though, as someone who does not like humans, just in general, like <laughs> there are so many people out there, like you'll definitely meet people, whether it's via dating apps or in real life, but like, will you like them is the question. <laughs> I never thought of it like that. 
I think it's good to be intentional when you're looking for somebody, but also I feel like when you are intentionally doing things to find someone, it doesn't flow to you. Totally. Mm. So I think it's more about being open in any situation, at least for me. Like if I'm going to like a party, I just make sure I like meet people and have conversations, yep. but with, not with the intentions of finding someone. I know. I firmly believe in the law of attraction, and yeah. I think that if you're like serious about finding a man yeah. or whatever, write down yep. the, your ideal person and yep. be specific. Mm. And then like, I don't know, like, a candle and just like yes go to house of intuition and get a candle if you do write down your ideal person like look at that list and be like are you a reflection of that like you you want this of that person but like are you that person would that person date you, you or, yeah you yeah. know so it's like also working on yourself first Self -care, bitch! What advice would you give to someone moving away from their hometown slash family? So I'm assuming they're asking this because they're moving to achieve something or to try something new. Mm -hmm. So um, I moved away from my family and hometown when I was 21 to move to LA. And it's really tough in that situation. I moved out here because I wanted to pursue a career in the industry. And everybody back then was like, don't do it. What are you thinking? It's expensive, yada, yada, yada. And um, also when I was leaving, my sister was pregnant as well with her uh, first kid. So it was really challenging. I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to see like my first niece, yeah. I'm gonna be missing out on all these things. But I think for me, cause my want was to come out here and do something for myself and my career. That want was bigger in a sense yeah. of like, you gotta focus on yourself and what you wanna do to get to where you wanna go. That was the quote for me when I moved out here, leap and the net will appear. Mm. There's all this fear of like, what if, and oh, I'm gonna miss my family. It's just like, just do it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you move out to LA, especially to be in entertainment, you have to have this idea like maybe it's cuckoo, but that you'll make it. Cause otherwise, why would you come out here? Why, like you have to have this feeling that it's gonna, that your dream is so important and it's so something you need to try. And to me, that was the, overarching thing and mm -hmm. I always knew that with necessity I would meet, make friends. If I have my people I don't try that hard but like I came out here with literally one friend. I had met, met a roommate off of like a random Facebook friend of a friend type thing and that was all I needed. It was like one person that connects you with one thing then I got a waitressing job then that connected me with my little waitressing crew then I started and then it starts you start it's like family. Uh, yeah. I think it's literally what you said mindset like yeah. mm -hmm. whether it's for a career or a new um, scenery like you said you need to come out here and say I'm going to make it because if not then you're gonna be here and you're gonna be miserable yeah. and everything's like, gonna feel like rejection and yeah like, no, exactly. you have to have this idea that like it's gonna work out things work themselves out in the end so the next one is the best way to stay on top of current fashion trends I struggle with this question because I always think like who cares what the trend is like just wear what you want to wear but if you're someone who does want to stay on trends I think you should subscribe to a channel called Style. <laughs> and every once in a while we do a video where we tell you what the trends are for the right. fall or the summer or the spring or whatever. You can even search in TikTok like fashion trends right now mm -hmm. and there will be like people that are like the five things you need this fall yeah. or YouTube, you know? Yeah, I can't swipe down my Instagram without seeing like girls doing like five things of how to pair this or yeah. that. Like yeah. it's constantly on my social media. So even when I'm not seeking it out, it's there showing right. me like what people are wearing. Ah, the internet's very intuitive. This next question is probably a, a really common question. How do you tell someone you like them without ruining your friendship? So obviously this is someone that you are friends with and you have feelings for, a little crush maybe. Um, tricky, little tricky, tricky, tricky. It is tricky. Yeah. Demi Lovato has a song called Let's Ruin the Friendship. Oh, oh you could just play that on a in a car ride. <laughs> I heard somebody answer this in a way that I, it like, I was like, oh, that's kind of a good thing to keep in mind. It's like when you do want to express that you're interested. You have to make it really easy for that friend to not have any pressure put on them. Mm. You basically want to make it easy to have them reject you because you don't want them to feel mm. like they'd be That's good point. telling you anything you want to hear just mm. to be like, and also you have a, you're allowed to have the boundary of like, if it's too hard to remain this person's friend, if you just have, if the feelings are strong, I think it's totally fair to be like, I'm gonna take a little step back as a friend for a while and just do my own thing. Movies ruin it for us mm. so oh, much. Percent. Like it's like yeah. always like the two friends and they're like, out. oh, you're a friend. And then it always works out. They fall in love. It's like, that's yeah. not how it happens. I think it's always a huge risk yeah. to huge. do it. Cause yeah. it depends on the personality of the person. Like you don't know, they, they never want to talk to you again or you make it awkward or it's like you express it if they're not interested. Then 
and you guys are like, oh, okay, it's cool. Yeah. But it doesn't always happen like that. I yeah. feel like it's, uh, this is maybe like overreaching, but I feel like in real life, in contrast to movies, it's easier to tell if it's going to work out or not because sure, I just feel like fair. there's always some type of tension or something that like gives you a clue that yeah. they're feeling the same way. That's the biggest thing. You have to know that there is that potential risk, yeah. but if you are fine with that, then why not? Like, why not just express it? But yeah. I have a quick story. Yeah. And I'm gonna make it really fast. <laughs> and I'm not gonna name any names because God forbid he sees this. I had this friend and like, we were more so like, we did like a web series or something together. So like, it's not like we were like close before we just liked it. And we like obviously had an attraction to each other, but neither one of us ever like acted on it. Yeah. But I could, there was like some type of tension. And then at the rap party, we like made out randomly. And like, we were just talking all of a sudden we both started making out. So I was like, okay, obviously we both feel the same way. And then after that, we were like, no, like let's just like be friends, whatever. And then I went to a party okay. that he invited me to. And then um, I, I was like, I drank so I didn't want to drive home. And then so he was like, oh, you can spend the night. And so I, when I spent the night in his room, but we were both said, we're like, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to sleep. And then in the morning we hooked up and it was so bad that like we, oh. our friendship got ruined and now we're not friends anymore. Oh no! So, yeah, but all that to say, you weren't, it probably weren't that close of friends. No. Really, But right? I'm saying like, even if it, if it even is a case where you both are into each other, you could try it and then it'd be horrible and it just ruins everything. I have opposite though, last okay. thing really quick. <laughs> no, that's a scenario, but there's also a scenario that I'm still friends with him. We've been friends for many years, my friend. Yeah. You did hook up. No, you did not hook up. I have said this no, multiple we times. We did not hook up. We did not hook up. I gotta tell that to the camera. Okay. Stage. Like my only guy friend that I've been friends with, not my only guy friend, I have a lot of guy friends, but that is like been with me and met my husband's boyfriends, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we did make out. Oh. Um, I think I knew that. When, yeah, we made out when we were younger. He had a crush on me. Mm -hmm. And we made out. And then I wasn't into him like that. And I think he did have a crush, but he also had crushes on a lot of other girls, a lot of our mutual friends. Mm -hmm. We made out one time. And we're fine. We're still friends. That's it's true. nothing's weird. And we're still close. Didn't make it yeah. awkward. Whatever. The moral of the story <laughs> is don't have sex with him and you'll be fine. Well, I guess we're not going to be friends then. Guess not. Next one is going into my freshman year of college and I'm worried about not liking it. Mm. Okay, um, when I first moved out to LA, cause I, I grew up in California, but I lived in NorCal and then I moved to SoCal for college. And I remember thinking like, I, I was like, this is gonna be the best thing ever. Like, I'm not gonna be homesick. Da, da, da. Literally, as soon as my family dropped me off, Same. I started crying. Same. And I am not even like a homesick type of person. I bawled my eyes out for two weeks. It was brutal. And you know oh what made God. it what made it really bad for me is because I, for whatever reason, didn't have a roommate my freshman year. Like, I got a single oh, room, yeah. which sounds like it's gonna be great because like you have your own space. But not yet. But like, yeah. not this freshman year, like when people have roommates, it's like that's like your first friend. Yeah. And I had no one and I didn't know anybody. So I was just like alone. I would go to class. Oh it was really hard for the first two weeks, I would say. And then after that, you just like growing pains. You just learn to be by yourself and you make friends through classes or extra extracurricular activities or whatever. But I think it's completely fair to be nervous because it's a change of pace. And like, usually when people move out to go to college, like their first time being on their own, yeah. like 18, you know? So it's gonna be hard at first, but I think as we were talking about earlier, like it's like character building. Like you yes. learn about yourself when either you're like, you're moving from somewhere far or you're going to college, like it's good to push yourself and yeah. jump and like hopefully that net appears, you know? It's good to be uncomfortable. You need yeah. to do that to yourself because yeah. I love being comfortable. I really hate being uncomfortable, but the most growth comes when you're uncomfortable. You need to push yourself. I stuck yeah. it out in my second year is probably when I started to really thrive the most, meet the most like friends I was going to have long term. Yeah. Because it just takes a minute. Everyone's nervous. Just remember like everyone's scared. No one has it figured out. Like every single person you meet, even if they seem confident, like everyone's mm -hmm. away from home now. I've never been this far from home before. The next question is, um, this woman is going to a wedding and the attire, you have to wear a dress that is floor length. Mm -hmm. So she's trying to figure out, I guess, where to get a wedding dress or what's appropriate for that kind of dress code. Yeah. Go to Macy's or Nordstrom. Check out Revolve or... if you have mm -hmm. a little bit of flexible budget. Whatever they wrote on the invitation, go to one of these dresses websites like Revolve or Windsor and sometimes they'll have that category. So yeah. then you can see like what's appropriate. I know like Rent the Runway has something like that. What's not appropriate, don't wear white. Usually that's just like a no. <laughs> I look really good in white. So our last question is, how do you know if he or she is the one? Ooh. The cutest question ever, which is very, very hard to Complex. answer. Complex. Yeah, I don't know because I haven't found him yet. <laughs> so like, I don't know exactly what it's gonna feel like, but there's definitely like a lot of false prophets out there. Like, <laughs> you're gonna meet somebody and you're gonna be like, oh my God, I'm in love. And then it's not gonna, they're gonna break your heart. You're like, oh, thought you were the one. Heartbroken. 
I think there's many ways to know. Depending on who you are, what your love language is, like what you want out of a partner, so it, it all changes. But I think there's like a few certain things. I think one thing, if you strip away um, everything um, that they do, and what's going on around them and you sit with them. Mm -hmm. If you just love that person and they make you want to be a better person, I think that's always key. Like, oh my gosh, like, I want to read now because he <laughs> reads and I want to read this book and oh, he does this, I want to go surfing. Like, they encourage you to want to be better. I think that's always like, wow, I, I feel like I could be with this person because I'm always going to be constantly growing. That's like, I like one that little category. Yeah. At least for me, like, I w the feeling that I hope I would get when I find the one is like someone you can just be completely yourself around. Yeah, it's very important. And like, just 100% comfortable. I mean, and we could list a billion different yeah. things of like how you would know. Being in a relationship with someone for like one year versus like 10 years or something, it's so many different stages that you're going through with this person. So it's like, do you want to be w around this person for a really long time? Do you like this person yeah. more than just loving them? You know, do you like them? Do you respect them? Do they respect you? Can you have deep conversations? Can you cry? Can you do yeah. all these things? You know, I think your gut helps check that in over time. You could think you find the one at 21 and your right. mind is yeah. so different then. Yeah. And then you're age 40 and like what you wanted is completely different from 21, which you thought like that was the love of your life. And right. it, maybe they were at that point in time. Yeah. But then now that you're 40, it's like, I don't want those things anymore. Right. You were the one for that moment, but mm -hmm. there will be another one. And just because your vag tangles does not mean <laughs> that I want The fanny no. flow usually just lost. Sage advice. You guys, thank you so much for asking us these questions. This was so much fun. I like this. Love this. Okay, this wait, 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 it's great. I love this so much that I really need you guys to like watch this so that it gets really good views and we yeah. do it again. <laughs> yeah, and comment also, also, you can comment down below any questions you want advice to. You can keep writing into us. We're gonna keep going if this does well. Yeah, DM us um, with, clever account. With clever conversation. conversation. Wait, there's gotta again. be a different outro, like the intro. Oh. Clever conversation. Like a different tone. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like the intro, like, clever conversation. Oh, wait, what was that? Oh, and then it ends with like, clever conversation. Like, has to go down. Like, clever over. conversations. <laughs> or maybe it's a talking. It's like, clever conversation. Listen, we're going to figure it out.